All right, hey, Gratuitous here from itsgratuitous.com. In this FL Studio tutorial, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to remove links. So for example, if you have set up a knob or a slider in FL Studio, I'll share how to remove project links from a VST or your global links. So let's get into it. Before getting into the video, if you guys would like to learn FL Studio, check out my free book called Five Keys to a Successful Beat. So simple it becomes creative. Get it by going to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys. One thing I forgot to share in this tutorial is you can also remove project links by going to into the browser, you go current project and remote control. If you left click, so this one right here was the uh, channel volume. So if I right click, you can see there's a check mark. So again, I show you in the tutorial that you can click here and you can reset it this way. Uh, but if you left click, this is where all of the project links will be and you can just reset it and hit accept. And as you can see, if I right click, this check mark is gone. But when it comes to a global link, as you can see, I have a global link set up here. Um, the global link doesn't get set up as a remote control because it goes into the uh, glo uh, global link settings and in order to remove the global link settings you can simply just remove it this way but if you set up tons of them all over your FL Studio uh, then you you will want to go to this folder and this is in documents image line FL Studio settings mapping generic local and then this is for port number one which was my main MIDI keyboard and this is where all the global links are set up okay you can simply just delete this if you want and then everything is back to fresh when you close and open up FL Studio again. Let's get into the tutorial where I break down how to remove links in FL Studio. All right, so you can see when I move this knob, it is moving the volume of this kick drum and you can see it is orange. That is telling us it is assigned and it is a project link. To remove it, you can just simply just right click this knob. You can see it has a check mark. Click it. You can go reset and if I move it now, you can see that it is green, which means that it is not assigned, but FL Studio does recognize that the knob is being moved. Okay, let me just walk through a little bit on how to set this up in case you are interested, because if you don't know how to re remove links, then you're probably new to linking, okay? You guys can check out my other tutorial about how to um, use multi-link to controllers, which is right here, right? Uh, but I just want to walk through how this works make it nice and easy for you. So you can simply just right click a knob, okay? You have what's called link to controller. This is a project link. You also have override global link. This is what's called a global link. A project link is typically just for this particular project. You wanna do something special. For example, if we click this, you get remote control settings, all right? If we right click this, this and go uh, the global link, you can see it is a global link window, okay? They look similar, but they are a little bit different. And I'm going to right click, let's go link to controller, and we can just simply just move a knob. Boom, it's linked, okay? If we want to remove that link again, I just shared that with you. Here is, uh, you just go reset, okay? And then we will just hit accept. And that is how you remove a link. And it's the same thing that if you set up a global link, so let's say we want to go global link, and again, many times I like to enable the smoothing, it just looks a little bit better as you move the knob on the screen. And now you can see it's blue. So a global link is blue, whereas the other one you saw was orange. There is a difference. Again, check out my other tutorial for project links versus global links, as well as the, um, now this is a separate tutorial about how to set up with multi-link to controllers, okay? And I'll share that just quickly in this tutorial as well, just to save you time. So I can move the knob and now you can see it is assigned, it's blue. Uh, a global link, if I click away, you can see that it's no longer working. So a global link, you have to be focused. A project link doesn't have to be focused, okay? So I'm gonna move my knob here. You can see that now, instead of link to controller, it's clicked on the global link. So I'll click global link, and to remove it, you simply just go reset. Now you can see it's back to green, which means that FL Studio recognizes the knob, but it's not assigned to anything, okay? Now let's just say, um, so here's multi-link to controllers. You can click this, we are going to move this knob and this knob and so what that does is now you can simply just move a knob but what this is doing is it's creating a project link so you have to think to yourself if you want to set up your knobs and sliders do you want a project link or do you want a global link a project link is typically you want to do something special just in this particular project because if you save then it remembers the mapping okay and also if you click away and like a different window or anything like that the project link will still work 
but it will not work in other projects. If you want your knobs and sliders to get hands on mixing across multiple projects, which I'll share with you in just a second, I'll load up a plugin here just to just so you can see that, um, then that's what's called global link. So you can see right now I've clicked the multi-link to controllers. Okay, we again just look right beside here. You can see that it puts it into a queue for us to use. So I'm going to move the volume knob again. Look right here where my mouse is. So this one is the organic kick and that was the channel volume. Let's go like Nexus. That's the channel volume. Again, we can just simply just move the knobs, but that creates a project link. So you can come here, you can right click uh, the multi-link to controllers. You have the same options, the link to controllers, that's a project link, that's just for this project, or you can set up a global link, okay? In this case, let's just set up a link to controllers, set up a project link. I wanna do something special, let's say just for this project, you click it, you're presented with this window, and you can just simply just move your knobs. Um, you don't have to have smoothing, but usually I like to enable it. So we have, um, I just moved the one knob, and now you can see we're on two of two, I'll go smoothing, and we'll move the next knob. So as you can see, I'll move this knob, it's moving, move the next knob, it is moving Nexus. If I click into a different window, you can see it is it is still moving because it is orange. Orange is a project link. And as you can see, Nexus, the volume is moving even if I'm, even if I'm in the playlist, if I'm in the mixer, okay? Now you can see if I move the third knob, you can see it's green, which means that FL Studio recognizes it, but it's not assigned to anything. And I'll just quickly share now, here is um, a third party plugin, which I have mapped with what's called global links because I like to get hands-on mixing in FL Studio, and I have set up FabFilter in such a way to allow me to get hands-on mixing for a really good workflow, which I'll just share with you right here. I shared this in my previous tutorial, but again, if you're new, then this will be really helpful to you. So I'll just hit play. Okay, and so because I've set up global links, if I right-click, um, you can see that I have override global link. And just one thing before we continue, if you are working with a third-party plugin and you're not able to right-click your knob, again, you can just click here, multi-link to controller, and you can just right-click here and you can access it. You can also move multiple and you can right-click. And if we go, let's say, override global links, you can see that you can go through each one up here. All right. And then, for example, if you want to reset all three of them, you can reset, go to the next one, reset. All right. Okay, so here is kind of like the hands-on experience if you are new and you're wanting to get hands-on. And uh, so now you know how to remove a link. I've also showed you how to add a link because make it fast and easy for you instead of trying to find another tutorial. And so now I've set these up as global links. And so what that means is when I move a knob, it's gonna be blue. And now if I click away, you can see that the knob is green, or sorry, uh, that's because it's a project link. So let me share how to set this up because this is gonna be good for you to see. So what I did is I, in this particular project, I've set up project link. So you can see this knob right here is moving the, the kick. So I'm focused on this compressor. It is still moving the organic kick, but watch if I go to the third knob, we did not set that up. So I'm focused on the compressor. You can see it's moving the attack. If I click onto the mixer, you can see that it's now green. It's not moving the attack because the, Plugin is not focused. So when we're using a global link, which is blue, so right now I'm moving it's green. That means that I'm focused on the mixer. It's not assigned to anything, and I'm still moving this knob. If I click into the uh, compressor, you can see that I'm moving the same knob. It's blue, it's moving the attack. So I have to be focused on that window for that to work. But now watch, if I go to the other knobs where we set up the project link, you can see that is now doing the kick volume and it is doing the nexus volume okay so now watch if i go into pro c2 which it's sh this knob should be doing uh the threshold this knob should be doing the ratio but it's been assigned as a project link a project link takes precedence over a global link okay so let's remove the project links now you can you can right click this go link to controller and you can just reset it right here but in this case, I know these two knobs are mapped, which I want to remove, and we can go multi-link to controllers. We're going to move this right here. It gets added to the queue. We move an, uh, move another one. Now we can do this faster. We, uh, you know, we can save like one or two clicks. So I'll right-click, go link to controllers, or um, yeah, and then watch, you just go reset, and just go accept. It's going to take us to the next one, reset. And so check this out. So when I move these two knobs in here, um, you can see that uh, it was blue, and I'll explain that in just, in just a second, but if I focus on the kick drum, you can see it's green. That means it's not assigned to anything. It's not assigned. If I come back to the compressor, you can see that it is now 
on the threshold and the ratio because these were always set up as global links when I came here. So again, watch, I'm moving this very first knob. It is moving the threshold and it is blue. If I come here and if I go link to controller, Okay, so we've mapped a project link which takes precedence over a global link. You can see that the threshold is no longer working, but if I right click the threshold, you can see that it, it is set up as a, as a global link. But because in this particular project, which a project link only saves for this project, okay, you can see that the kick drum is moving here, it's moving if, as I'm focused on the plugin, and it's moving even if I'm focused in the mixer. So if we remove this, link to controller, I'll just go reset. Okay, hit accept. And so now it's green, okay, because it's not assigned to anything. In order for the global link to work, we have to be actually focused in the plugin. You can see it is now moving, okay? Oh, and just quickly, like I shared with you, so if I move this knob, you can see that it's green and I came here and it was blue. I said I'd share that with you. So what I've done is because I told you I like to get like the hands-on experience. For example, these plugins are all mapped. As you can see, the threshold and the ratio and the attack is moving, right? Um, but in this case, what I've done is on Nexus, you can see I've also gotten like the mapping going on. So this does like reverb a lot of times as I'm using a plugin um, sometimes it's nice to pull back on that reverb. All right, so again, that is what's called a global link. And that's why when this window was closed, and if I move this one, it was green, came here and it was blue. That's because if I click on it, you can see it was actually moving the mix knob. So uh, let me just load up this project again. And uh, that way, any of the volumes and stuff uh, didn't change. And I'll just share one thing with you guys here, just a, uh, a quick plug. If you guys are looking for good drum samples, you guys can visit my website, check out the Drum Bundle Trio, okay? Um, super, super nice kicks and claps and, right? These are all like the sounds I always use in like my courses and stuff. I always try to teach you guys off of high quality kits. As you can see, there's kicks, tons and tons of variety. And again, you guys can just uh, reach out if you have any questions, okay? So let's get the hands-on mixing experience quickly. And I'm just going to hit the display, makes it nice and small and easy. And I'll hit play and you're going to see that it's blue. Okay, so I can move my knobs. Right, so I can get hands on mixing. I got my attack, my release. So now when you are using a mouse, you can only do one knob at a time, right? And so when you're mixing, like watch, I can do the threshold and the ratio at the same time. Attack, right? So right now we're obviously aggressive. Another thing, I've also set up my sliders to uh, turn off and on this plugin. So check this out, off. So when it comes to compression, it's really important that volume is a same level. So it's obviously being compressed really hard, but let's bring up the volume as a fair comparison. So off. So with it. So compressing pretty hard, obviously. Bring that back. Open up that attack just a bit. Faster release. So this is how fast that I can mix. And you can see in the top left, it's blue. So off. Now the master might be just a bit, little bit loud. So I can just use my slider and check this out. So I'm looking right here, 5.1. Let's put this to like, let's say 4.4. When, when I kick this back in, uh, the chorus is coming. So let's go. That's the chorus. So again, I got to be focused on the actual plugin. So turn it on. It's still a little bit loud. It's still being compressed a bit hard. Bring up the threshold a little bit. A little bit hard on that ratio, maybe. Open up. Off. Pull it back just a little bit. And again, that's just a single compressor. And that's how you can get hands-on mixing in FL Studio. Super, super powerful once you know how to set it up, once you know how to map everything. But this tutorial was just sharing with you how to remove those links, okay? So again, if you guys want to get this sound kit, it is on my website at special pricing. If you take my FL Studio courses, this is typically the, the sounds that I use so that you can kind of follow along nice and easy. And I always tell you guys, when you're looking for a good sound kit, make sure it's nice and organized. As you can see, look how many snares are in here. This is not like many of the other sound kits that you would see out there where like they're selling like only like 50 sounds for like $47. It's fairly priced and there's over like 2,300 sounds in here okay tons tons 
and tons of sounds. Uh, I've This is created by Xavier. If you don't know Xavier, he is super, super good sound designer. I've known him for many, many years through all my um, experience and journey so far uh, within music production. So if you guys want to learn FL Studio, just visit itsgratuitous.com. This is how you remove links. Again, you can just simply right click the knob and if it's checked, um, that's how you can re remove it there. Or you can click the multi-link to controllers. You can move it and you can right click and then go. In this case, there is no check mark, but let's say, let's say it was linked to controller, then you can reset it right there. Okay. So again, visit itsgratuitous.com. I'm gratuitous. I'm a recognized FL Studio trainer. And I'll talk to you guys in another FL Studio tutorial.